Thanks for tuning in to Veg with Lisa's Winter Squash Series Part 2. If you missed the first part, head to vegwithlisa.com and check out our pumpkin episode. Today, I'm going to show you how to cook these three different squashes three different ways in the oven. I'm going to start with my favorite, the delicata. Delicata is a little bit more unusual squash that you might need to go to a farmer's market to find. You can see that they often come in different sizes and different colors. You know what, I haven't found that big of a difference, so I'm going to cook both of these and we'll, we'll give them a try. Carefully, you're going to need a big knife for all of these. Open it up and, as you might guess, scoop out these seeds. Now, I really like to save the seeds. You can clean them off and toast them for a tasty snack, or you can use them in your homemade veggie stock that you're going to use to cook squash soup with. Hint, you might be needing some squash stock for an upcoming squash episode. You can also save them if they're nice organic heirloom squash like this to plant in your garden next year. Don't they look like little boats? going to float my delicata boat upside down in a baking dish. This is very much the traditional way your mom might have made squash and I think it works just fine for these beauties. Pour a little bit of water in the bottom. I'm going to bake these in the oven for about 20 minutes. Check them, see if they're getting done. After about 20 minutes or so, the squash will be nearly, nearly done. Take them out of the oven and flip them over. I'm going to season them with just a little bit of butter. If you're vegan, feel free to use a nice quality olive oil or maybe a macadamia nut oil. A squeeze of fresh lime juice. A sprinkle of pure chili powder. Most chili powders that you buy are a, actually a blend of spices. It's what you use to make chili with. It might have paprika, which is chili powder, oregano, garlic salt, cumin. So if you can, search out a pure chili powder for this recipe. It will likely be ground ancho chili powder, which is dried poblanos. Um, or you can just use paprika, which is mild ground chilies. A little bit of salt and pepper. Pop it back in the oven for a few minutes until the butter starts to melt and then take it out of the oven and spoon the butter around the edges and bake it until it's completely soft and tender. Delicata is my favorite, the acorn is Glory's favorite, and this is Glory's recipe. She learned how to make acorn squash this way from her mom. One really cool tip that she just showed me, sometimes when you're cutting it, it's difficult to get down through the center because that stem's in the way? Well, gee, try popping the stem off before you cut it. All right. Be really, really, oh, that one is much easier. Thank you, thank you. Same deal. Really, with most of these squashes, the initial preparation is going to be the same. This is so simple. Talk about easy. <laughs> Once the squashes are cleaned out, cut side up this time. This is Gloria's super secret tip in a baking sheet. And a little bit of butter, or again, you can use a nice fruity olive oil, a little bit of salt, and freshly ground black pepper. Now, I, I probably would have thrown some fresh herbs in there, but Glory said no. She is an acorn squash purist. Now, cover these bad boys with foil. That is it. Now, Glory says you don't even need to uncover these to check. Just set the timer for an hour. Take them out with your hot pads on. Kind of squeeze them. If they feel soft, they're done. If the delicata is my favorite and the acorn, Glory's favorite, this might just be everyone's favorite. Butternut is everywhere. And you know what? I think it's absolutely delicious myself. I'm going to show you, again, the procedure is the same. Cut it open, take the seeds out. A little trick that I like to do is, oh man, 
you got to be so careful and have a super sharp knife. I like to cut the neck off from the bulb on the end because this is solid. That's a good tip for when you're trying to decide what butternut squash to buy. The ones with the longest and the thickest necks are going to have the most flesh. The bulb, this is actually relatively light, is where the seeds are. I cut the stem end off and then I use a good sturdy peeler. Slice this into half moons so that you can cut it into chunks. I oiled a baking dish. I've got my squash chunks in there and now comes the fun part. This time of year is perfect to use the end of season herbs from your garden. I've got some fresh rosemary some fresh thyme. These are all from my garden at Sprout Community Garden. Some fresh sage. Mmm, that smells amazing. Some fresh parsley. Hey, wasn't that a song? Some minced garlic. Now, I like to use a little bit of nutritional yeast. It's purely optional. Just nice to have something a little bit crummy in there to collapse the, to collect the squash. This is going to get really soft and collapsey. Some freshly ground black pepper and some salt. A generous drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And get your hands dirty. And same with this. It's going to go in the oven. I'm going to bake this until the squash is really, really tender. I like to give it a little shake a couple times. Real, um, real soft and melty, almost like it's a puree. I am so excited to try my squash feast. First, I'm going to scoop in here on the delicata. Oh man, that is going to be so delicious. Mmm, mmm. I totally see why that's my favorite. Of course, it might be the butter. Then let's try Glory's acorn. I've just taken it out of the oven. Oh my gosh, wow, that is awesome. Of course, if you want to add a little brown sugar or maple syrup, I promise not to tell Glory. For the butternut. Mmm. Wow. I may have a new favorite. Give them a try. And stay tuned for Winter Squash Series Episode number three.